and uh, one man with his own fond memories of the subcontinent is former Pakistan coach Jeff Lawson. Henry. Beach. Welcome, mate. Welcome. Lovely I mean, to be back here. I just want to say one thing. 11 different coaches uh, in Pakistan in the last 10 years, it's always going to be a tough one, wasn't it? Yeah, well, they've got a 67-year-old now, might be the 12th very shortly. <laughs> Anything's possible. Hey, they're, they're winning a few games, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, they're on fire, three-zip yeah. against Daiso's mob. Yes. Always good to see Daiso getting beaten, but... Uh, <laughs> like to think there's a bit of the Lawson residue there in those results. All oh, right. Yes. Well, not your 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 mate. What's his name? Ujay's butt. The butt. Yeah, oh, he's he, known as the butt. He wasn't on your side, was it? But mate, how how tough is it? You know, from an Australian going in there trying to coach Pakistan, it's not easy for anyone. But for you, um, how was it anyway? Experience. Well, well yeah, um, a fascinating experience. I mean, not just coaching cricket, but uh, the life experience of living there. You know, for 15 months more or less, and being in Lahore, it was. You know, it, it, it's something that uh, I will never forget, and, and totally different culture. But the cricket, look, I must admit, I'm, I'm still excited about the cricket that goes on there. It's a great setup. Um, the international side, they've got some good young players. Their domestic cricket strong, and you just get disappointed when when all these administrative problems happen. You know, new new um, president of the country, new new chairman mm. of the board, and they sacked half the admin guys. They've halved their budgets in cricket development, and yet when you see the players they've got and the end of facilities, you just think you know, the the prospects are, are fantastic in Pakistan. So, so can they go to the next level, Pakistan? For years, if there's you know disruptions everywhere amongst the, the, the different levels there, what do they need to do to be, become a, a power in world cricket? Well, not have eleven different coaches in ten years. Yeah, you know, they, they just need some some continuity in everything yeah. they do. And and with the previous chairman they had, he put a lot of money into the development of the game, mm. the National Cricket Academy, and he was the guy who got me on board and said we we want some Australian attitude to what yep. we do. And you know, I would have liked the whole two years just to get it done, yeah. but unfortunately that didn't happen. So but they just need continuity. Is, is that the biggest issue. problem that the guy in charge of Pakistan cricket is, is he the well, he's the order. He's the dictator. He's yeah. the autocrat. I mean, whatever he says goes, which sometimes is good, but mm. a lot of times is bad. And um, it's not just that I got sacked. It's the fact that most of the administrative guys are gone as well. They're marketing mm. people, and uh, you know the the guys who the directors of coaching and all that sort of thing. So I mean, under those circumstances, we have in Australia exactly the opposite. We have this great continuity all the way through our cricket. We have we put people in place, we trust their judgments and that's why we continue to be, be pretty good. But Pakistan is just the opposite. And their talent pool, they've oh, got some real good players? Very good players. I mean they their first class uh, season and set up, they, they've got a, a pentangular tournament exactly the same as the Sheffield Shield. Mm. It is a high quality mm. tournament, they play on some really good grounds um, and the cricket's excellent. So the talent's there, it's, it's it's bringing them through and giving them support at all levels that they need to do. What about from the ICL point of view, losing players uh, into the ICL? Um, and there's always talk about show back down, some of the players may be going, and then the next minute they're not going, then they're getting banned, and then they're not getting banned. I mean, that, that's just yeah, disruptive, I mean, isn't it? It is, it is, BJ, and that's that's the problem they have, that because they don't have their continuity and the same selectors and the same policies and philosophies that, say, Australia do, the young guys, if they they pick for two games and then drop, they've gone to ICL. Mm. And, and there are a lot of players, a number of older players, I mean, Inzimam's there and Rana Veed and Razak and Mahmood and those guys. And, and Mohamed Yusuf has just gone there. Mm. I mean, he's left the fold. I mean, he's their, still their best... 50 over and test player and he's, he's banned then. He's, he's, he's on the ban list well he's, he's taking the money across the road at icl and so right. they, they just torn his contract up which is which is you're playing for another mob so that's fair enough but he's he's not happy with the chairman and the setup take my, my other options are i'll go and play 20 over cricket for a lot of money so hey, well, i just want to sort of clear out how, how what did you do wrong? That's what I want. Do you well, know, or was it was it put to you exactly? Nah, I mean, I, I, in fact, I put it to the chairman when I finally got a meeting with him because he didn't. He refused to meet me. He just made statements in the press. And I said, "Look, what, what's the problem?" And he didn't come up with one reason. So, I mean, it's, it's all politics. I mean, you, did uh, you know that? I mean, I'm reading in the press that you had no idea. No, nah, look, I finally got a meeting with him after about ten days, where he said I was quote, useless, unquote. And a lot of people might agree, Junior's laughing, but he... Um, but uh, I finally got a meeting. We had a lovely meeting, you know, the, what's the way forward and what we need to do and all these sorts of things. And I left his office and I turned on my TV set in my room at the academy an hour later and I got the sack. So what, what, what about the playing group? Was there sort of any sort of dramas with them, you know, about your style or anything like that? Or what, what no, look, I think there was... They're, they're like a playing group anywhere. They're young, enthusiastic, they love the game. They want to play the game, mm. you know, like, like any young people do. And, and the people, uh, they're just terrific guys. I mean, 
I, I still, you know, they've sent me emails from Abu Dhabi from the current series. Mm. You know, the three or four of them every day. What's going on? You know, we, we did this and we did, did, didn't do something else. So, but they're just really good guys. Yeah. And do they look up the Australians, the, the Pakistanis? Do they talk about Australia and the way they play the game? Absolute uh, ultimate respect mm. for the way Australia play their game. Not necessarily for the way Australia behaved on occasion, but certainly mm. the way they play their cricket. I mean, Cameron Ackbowl, who's your favourite player? Oh, Adam Gilchrist. Mm. You know, McGrath won. They're, they're absolute heroes of the Pakistan players and the Pakistan public. What about the big fella show back to him? I saw you doing some work with him uh, over the last year. I mean, where's he at? I mean, for him, for them to be successful, they need him up the front taking wickets and playing? BJ, if uh, I can answer that question, I may be President of the US, United States. But, um, <laughs> yeah, look, he just missed the current series with a calf injury and they won three zip. I think that says mm. just about it. I don't need him, BJ. No. Well, that was against More the West Indies. I mean, worth. did you watch any of that? Pakistan, you know, won the first one by no, the highlights on the night on Fox ball. actually after this show. I think, so I'll be watching. <laughs> that. The job they're still on the highlights there, Henry. I mean, they, they look pretty good, and they had a they are good. good bit of momentum there. They are good. You know, a couple of good young players. That guy there, for white alarm, he's uh, he's 21, looks 15, and he's he's going to be the next great thing out there. Cameron Ackmole's had a great series, 17 off five balls in the last over of mm. game one. I mean, they they're a tremendous young group of players. And they don't, they don't need Shao back to there. They've got plenty of other good fast bowlers. Let's move on. He's 34, and mm. they can't get him on the park. So well, it's a good start. I mean, the, in the second one day, they won by 24 runs, and the third one by 31 runs. But I wanted to ask you, was it after Bob Warren was death in the West Indies, I mean, you're moving into the hot seat over there. How, how much did that really affect him, and, and did it set it back for the last year, year and a half, while you were there, do you think? No, look, I mean, the, the players had an incredible amount of respect for Bob. And yeah. they, they were... They were very upset that they'd been accused of, of wrongdoing because, you know, the, the Islamic way is, is one of great friendship and hospitality. So to be accused of that was, was a very negative thing for them. But they had a lot of respect for him as a person and his coaching methods. Mm. And, uh, you know, and when an Australian came along to replace him, I think they were, they were very, very happy about it. They didn't want a local coach. They wanted someone who can be outside their system of politics and influence and mm. who, can, who can do the job. And... Uh, I think because they'd had Bob before and followed by me, I think they they, they felt like they actually had a bit of continuity and they're heading yep. in the right direction. How frustrating was it, the fact you were there for 15 months and there was very few test series, obviously teams not touring there. Um, from your point of view, you yeah, were pretty yeah. vocal in saying it was you felt that it was safe to tour there? Yeah, and look, I still think it's safe to go there and play cricket. Mm. I wouldn't send the backpackers up yeah. to the northwest frontier province, but I think it's still safe to play cricket there. Um, yeah, very frustrating. They're scheduled to play India in a test match on January 13, and that'll be 13 months between test matches. Yeah. And you can't take a team forward or individuals mm. if you're not playing test match cricket. And of course, Champions Trophy cancelled, mm. Australia not touring in April. You don't get a chance to test yourself against the best in the world. So yeah, yeah pretty frustrating. Yeah.